Hey, this is the Daily Overpass. My name is Eric and I make apps. Now today I want to talk about why sometimes your architecture shouldn't have too many moving parts. <laughs> All right, so one of my favorite parts about being a software developer is the initial part of a project where we architect out the solution, where we start thinking about what should go on the client, what should go onto the back end, what should be stored in the database, what should be stored in the, in the app itself, what should the API consist of. And I still maintain that, and, I, and I've said this before, that if you're gonna do a, a client server architecture, which a lot of applications are, I prefer to have a different developer on the server than on the client. Because when you have one developer in both places, yeah, we tend to get a bit lazy and we start, we don't think about the API as being its own little thing. So like a really good API developer is designing the API as their front end and they're thinking all the different ways it could be used. Whereas the client application developer may only, if they're only doing both sides of it, they may only be thinking about what's needed for the client. And it also, out of necessity, it results in better documentation. In order for the client guy to be able to code to the API, the API guy has to provide proper documentation to the developer, and then that documentation usually goes on for more and more applications going forward. Anyway, enough about that. But it is possible to have like architectures that are too complicated. I was looking at a, an architecture the other day where it was something where there were all these different moving parts and it was really fascinating to look at. Oh, they're using this over here, they're using that over here. Oh, they're storing data here, but they're also storing it over here. And it was really cool. The problem with it was occasionally certain parts would fall over. Like there were too many moving parts, too many points of failure. Right, and it's like this delicate balance. Like you get, when, when we start off as junior developers, I know I've done this, everything, well first of all you have spaghetti code, everything's just one big lump of code. And then you start learning about modularization, you start moving things out into to classes, into functions, you start reusing components, which is fantastic. When you talk about the, uh, the different tiered architectures, where, I mean the, the simplest one is the, you've got the, the data tier, the business logic tier, and the, the front end, the, the client tier, right? all that kind of stuff and it grows out and you design these beautiful solutions where you reuse all this code but as a junior developer everything's just one big lump of code right but it is possible to have too much we have too many points of failure and it's not just in terms of of systems because we also do this in processes so we had this really good process of doing the videos a couple months ago where I would film the videos I would upload them to Google Drive uh, the, the person working in my office, she would download them, just do a really quick edit of them. Then it goes to uh, my VA, she'll write the description, she'll do the keyword research, and then my designer, she'll do the thumbnail. So that was, and it, we still have different parts of that. The problem was, we have, if someone's ill, then it's, it messes up the process. There was lots of different points of failure. And one of the things we're doing this week is we're bringing on a new design, a new video editor, and he's going to handle a lot more of these things. We're trying to streamline those processes, take out those different failure points, because in terms of a system, it was beautiful. I loved the way when it worked well, but there were so many different points where things could fall down just because things happen, and it does. So this is something I just I wanted to bring up. I, I can't really go into specifics about the different um, things that I was looking at the other day, but I have seen architectures that are so complex, and at, from a as a developer, I think they're just awesome. I think, yeah, I love seeing those kind of things. But as a business owner that I was talking to, he was a bit like, I've got to get a different developer for this side, a different developer for that side. And it was, and also, if something fails, I have to find out where it fails and everything like that. So let me know what you guys think. This is something, the kind of thing that I think about all the time when I talk with developers. And uh, it's, it's interesting to me. So anyway, that is it for today. I'll talk to you guys again tomorrow. Bye.